let's suppose that I have text that has very proper spelling that looks a little bit like this. It reads, on my trip to Amsterdam, I visited the National Museum of the Arts, the Museum of Natural Sciences, the Nemo Science Museum, and the Royal Gallery. Let's then also say that I'm interested in detecting all the museum references in the text. Then in this particular case, because I'm assuming perfect spelling, I might be able to use the fact that there are these capital letters around when people are referring to a museum. So in this video, I'll be building a entity ruler uh, that is going to try to leverage this phenomenon uh, in order for me to detect museums in text. Now, to help me with this, I did make this one little helper function over here. This function will accept text as well as some patterns, and it's then going to make a new spacey pipeline that's going to have an entity ruler attached using the patterns that I pass it, and it will then also render any entities that it's found by using this spacey. Uh, and this is going to just make it a little bit easier for me to uh, iterate on my approach. And here you can see an example of a pattern and when I give the original text as well as this pattern to this function over here, then you can see, you can see that indeed the entities are nicely rendering and this will just give me a very nice place to start and to uh, iterate from. So let's start by just having a quick look at what I have over here. Uh, I'm saying that the label for the pattern here is museum and we can confirm that because it's attached here in our displacy visual. But the pattern that I'm using is fairly basic at this moment. I am just matching a single token and I'm saying match it whenever we have a token where the lowercase text is equal to museum. And that's an okay starting point, but if I just have a look at this first example over here, I would want this national bit to be attached as well. Um, so let's accommodate for that as a first step. One thing that I could do is I could say, well, I also want to match when the token before museum is a title. That is to say, it starts with a capital letter. So let's run that. Right. So that's a little bit better, but uh, also a little bit worse. Because we can see that in this case, it is definitely matching national museum here. So that's better. But we can also see here that we aren't matching this museum anymore because there's no title case token in front of it. So to fix that, I am going to make this part of the pattern optional. So what I can do is I can add an extra key to this dictionary. With this OP over here, I am saying, well, it's a, an operator or a quantifier that I want to attach. And this question mark is making it clear that this is now a optional pattern. So let's run this again. Right, so that's good. Uh, we now see that we're matching this museum again. So that's definitely a improvement, I think. But let's keep going. Let's add some more patterns because uh, in this case, I would also like to attach this Nemo section over here uh, to this one museum entity. And Nemo is all in caps. So that's not going to be a title. I need a different pattern for that. And for that, I can use this is upper attribute um, this should now match Nemo as well. So let's run that. Great. Uh, we are now matching Nemo over here, so that's good. Um, what I would now like to do is maybe have a quick look at this Royal Gallery over here. The main thing that's not working out so well is that we are matching for the string Museum. But I think Gallery is also fine, so let's do something with this pattern. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change some commands by nesting a little bit. So what I've now done is I've kind of added this nested dictionary, if you will. And by doing so, I'm able to say, well, I want the lowercase text to be either gallery or museum. So let's run this now. Okay, good. That's also looking a bit better. We are now matching most things, but if I have a quick look at this first one over here, uh, National Museum of Arts, um, then I think what I need to do is add a title after the museum. But I now also need to accommodate that the word of can be in there as well. So I'm going to also attach another pattern for that. So I think this should work. Basically by adding these two extra patterns, 
I should now be able to match of as well as arts after. So let's run this. Right, so again, a little bit better and a little bit worse. One thing that I just forgot to do is that this lower of that needs to be optional. So let's first fix that. Great. So now I get my Royal Gallery back and the Nemo Science Museum. That's good. But there is still one little awkward thing we got to address. And that is that here it's saying Museum of Natural and then it's forgetting about this sciences bit. Now the reason is that right now I'm saying that this is optional. With this question mark I'm saying that it can match zero or one times. Uh, but in this case I might be more interested in matching zero or many. Um, so for that I can use the star symbol to uh, indicate that. And now it feels like we are definitely getting there. Now, one final thing about these uh, operators, I suppose. Um, you might have noticed that the symbols that I'm passing in here, uh, that they have the exact same semantics as you might expect from a regex. But I also hope that you appreciate that they are quite powerful. They really allow these patterns to be much more flexible. With that in mind, if I want to be more general, then it might make sense to consider putting stars here as well. Just because we are also, of course, interested in matching other patterns than just this one example that I have over here. But that's something that you're going to find out by iterating and improving these patterns yourself. What I hope is clear is that these patterns are actually quite expressive and you can use them in very flexible ways, partially because we have these operators at our disposal, but also because we can link commands together like what I'm doing here with in. We can also write lots of these pattern files, which we can save on disk, and the entity ruler can also load all of these patterns in. So there's definitely a lot that we are able to do here. However, at the same time, I also hope that you agree that this approach is also just a little bit brittle. In order for this to work, I am really hoping that we have perfect spelling. And if we have examples that don't have perfect spelling, then this is no longer going to work. So the assumptions that I have might only work for a specific corpus, but also this is a assumption that works very well in English, but maybe not in other languages. English has a lot of words that are typically capitalized, like days of the week, like Monday, for example, that other languages simply don't capitalize. So that is definitely something to always keep in the back of your mind. Having said that, I do think that in general, these capitalization patterns can be useful as a pre-processing technique right before you're annotating some data. You can define these patterns relatively quickly, and they can be used as a quick way to identify potentially interesting entities which in turn helps you bootstrap your first machine learning model. And you can always see these patterns as a starting point that you'll be refining as time moves on and as you understand your data set better. Definitely check out the documentation if you're interested in this. I do think that these pattern rules are pretty fun to work with. And I'm also only just really touching the surface here because you can also use grammatical dependencies or parts of speech uh, in your patterns as well.